She was an old woman with gray hair and dark skin, and she gave a sigh of relief as she pulled into the cemetery parking lot, as if just being able to apply the brake was an answer to prayer. She shuffled among the tombstones resolutely, nodding in recognition as she passed familiar names. It was becoming difficult to dredge up faces along with the names. Her gait was steady, and each footstep took her closer to her destination, a tombstone that read Williams. When she reached it, she stood and let the fresh, earthy smell wash over her. It felt like rain. You always loved the rain, didn't you, Leo? She said aloud. Yes, you did. You love the rain. In these sacred moments of Clara Williams' life, she knew she was not talking to her husband. She knew where his soul was, and it was not under the green earth below her. Still, the exercise cleared her mind and connected her with the past in a way nothing else could. She could look at pictures of Leo in his military uniform and a few tattered photographs he had carried with him after he'd come home from Vietnam, and those brought her closer but there was nothing like the feeling of running her hand across the cut stone and feeling the carved-out name and adjusting the little flag on top of his grave. There always had to be a flag there. Clara had no concept of military warfare, except for those pictures her husband kept. She couldn't bring herself to watch war movies, especially the documentaries with grainy footage of men in combat, falling napalm and the recoil of M-16s against naked shoulders, she flipped as fast as she could past the PBS station that aired those. It hit too close to the bone. But Clara did know another conflict. It was waged every day on six billion battlefields of the human heart. She knew enough about warfare to realize that, tucked away in some place protected from the onslaught of bullets and bombs, someone had developed a strategy. She pictured her husband staring at maps and coordinates, Sweaty and tired and scared, he and his men would analyze what the enemy was doing and mobilize resources to push back against their advance. In the years since his death, she had heard stories of his bravery, his sacrifice for his men. We need men with steel backbone today, Leo, she said. Like you, steel backbone and a heart of gold. But Leo's heart had given out early and left her alone with a ten-year-old son. His death had been sudden. She hadn't prepared for it. In her thirties, she thought she had plenty of time and that life would stretch out forever. But life had not worked that way. Life had its own strategy and time had cut like a river into her heart. Clara gingerly knelt by the tombstone and pulled at weeds, thinking of a day 40 years earlier when she stood at this same spot with her only son. I wish you could see Clyde, she said. He looks so much like you, Leo, talks like you, has some of the same mannerisms, the way he laughs kind of low and easy-like. I wish you could see the man he's become. Forty years earlier, she had stood here with Clyde, looking at the stones covering the landscape and loved ones. Why do people have to die, Mama? He had said. She had answered him too quickly. She told him death comes to everyone and quoted the verse about it being appointed unto man once to die and after that, the judgment. Then she realized he wasn't looking for theology, but something else entirely. She knelt at the same spot and told him the truest thing she knew. I don't know why people have to die, son. I don't think death was what God wanted, but it sure was part of somebody's plan. I believe God is big enough and powerful enough to use it. There's more going on here than we can see. Clyde had just looked at her with tears in his eyes. She'd hugged him and cried with him, and the more questions he asked, the tighter she held on. The words drifted high above the trees and blew with the wind. She could still feel his hug there at the gravestone. I never thought of myself growing older, she said to her husband and looked at the wrinkled skin of her weathered hands. I tried to carry on and just head into life, and now... Four decades have passed like a strong wind. I've tried to learn the lessons God has taught me. She pulled herself up and brushed the grass away from her knees. I'm sorry, Leo. I wish I could go back and try again. I wish I had another chance. But it's okay now. You rest easy. I'll be seeing you soon, I expect.